Um, we, I want to just, I mean, I want to pick up one one issue that yes. we we didn't really cover okay. under issue nine, and and um, the the issue, and it goes to the same thing. The recommendation here is to recalculate all statistics and report the updated statistics okay. to the committees. I mean, that there there's serious questions on the part behalf of our consultants mm -hmm. about the statistics that you have put yes. in your report, and I appreciate that you're going to the board with your information, but. If it's not accurate information, the board is at a severe disadvantage in trying to um, carry out their functions as board members. And um, you know, what about these discrepancies in your submitted material to us? Well, yes, we agree with you that we have to give the, the, the board members uh, correct uh, information. And you have and to give the legislature correct information yes. and the sunset process in particular. Yes. Everyone correct information. Yes. That is really a given. I know that. We know that. Um, uh, well, apparently, when we did statistics at one time, we calculated differently. Um, and um, when CPI was implemented, it took us time to identify statistical inconsistencies in the system, which had resulted in closed field investigations and being captured as closed desk investigations. When we caught the discrepancy in 2013, we manually corrected the field, uh, the numbers for the field investigations reported to the Department of Finance. However, this information was never changed in the system, resulting in reporting the correct information. Um, so again, no excuses, but this helps to illustrate the need for a modern, reliable, computerized tracking system that will accurately report accurately report reliable data for all DCA entities. And um, we, we made a mistake. We didn't, we made, we manually did it, but we didn't correct it in the system. And so then the system came up with these numbers that were uh, not correct. Is that, did I capture the? Yes, thank you. And I can assure the committees that we will look at all the numbers in our sunset report and make sure that they are correct. The um, mistake was inadvertent on my part, and I take full responsibility for it. We know it's important to, re uh, to report accurate information to everybody, and um, that's one of the reasons we're looking forward to a new system that is not 30 years old. So you are getting the help of DCA's uh, audit oh, yeah. and oh, yes. to, to come in and kind of some immediate intervention to yes. try and resolve some of these issues. Yes, since December they're doing that. But are you in Breeze now? Like no, we're not. So what release are you in? Release two. Two. So two. Some, okay. I missed that. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Um, I think you've covered all of the issues. Are there other questions of the? Committees. So now, did you have a yes, sir? I do have. Of course. Uh, this is just before public comment, correct? It is okay. just before public comment. I did want to um, take this moment to congratulate Teresa on her retirement, and put out a push that we will be recruiting a new executive officer in the near future. The official announcement uh, will be posted on the DCA website, and with staffing some of the issues just, um, discussed in the paper, um, having the best, brightest, and uh, EO on board with our other staff, I think will benefit the people of the state of California. And someone who loves a challenge. Yeah. Yes. But, uh, but someone who will clearly know what they're getting into also. Yeah. And we get to choose that person. Uh, yeah, we, we're going forward with our first meeting April 10th. Very good. Thank you very much. Uh, now we will open it to uh, members of the professional groups, organizations, individuals for public comment. And thank you. And if we can do that in the next few minutes, we will be finished with this uh, particular item. Good Fish afternoon 100, again. American Nurses Association, California, um, who worked with the Board of Vocational Nursing and Psych Techs for a long time. I, I wanted to make an emphasis on the salaries. An average new graduate in California makes 86000 a master's prepared NAC starting salary is somewhere around 54000 um, I know that both the Board of Nursing and the uh, BVNPT have um, frequently requested help 
with reevaluating that salary range. I don't understand why that's a union issue. It seems to me it's a category issue. <coughs> Secondly, I know both boards have petitioned for non-master's prepared nurses, a different category. The NAC is a master's prepared nurse. Um, they've requested non-master's prepared nurse category that could do initial review of um, documents, could look at new applicants, a lot of things that a registered nurse at a bachelor's degree could do, and it has been denied many, many times. Mm -hmm. There are solutions by both boards that have been presented to resolve their staffing issues, and they've been denied for m over 10 years. I, I've, could, I've personally testified at budget meetings and at sunset hearings on this issue over and over and over again. Um, I would ask some help for both the boards in dealing with that staffing issue. I attended the LVN board meetings when they had two RN staffs. Not only do they approve and do site visits for a hundred and some schools, but they also are the initial review of all the enforcement action and they do the um, licensing that comes in from other states, the new applicants that are applying for the licensing board, it was down to two staff members. I think they've done a phenomenal job with the number of people they have and any help this committee can give them would be appreciated. Thank you very much. Next witness, please. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and Senators. I'm Kobe Pizzotti with the California Association of Psychiatric Technicians. We represent roughly 6,000 uh, psychiatric technicians in state employment. Um, there's a couple issues I wanted to, uh, to touch on. First and foremost, uh, we support the extension of the sunset. Um, this is an incredibly important board and they license and regulate all of our members. Um, we support the issue number four <clears throat> excuse me, the fund merger between the LVN fund and the PT fund, it is in the best interest to have a very healthy singular fund so that everybody will be able to have a good licensed and regulated uh, industry. Um, secondarily, uh, we've, we've um, introduced, a, not us, but we've sponsored a bill introduced by Assembly Member Ridley Thomas, AB 1165, that bill would allow the board to charge an application fee for the programs that the board regulates. This would help the board with additional revenues to make sure that the funds are solid and solvent for the years to come. This is mirrored after what the RN board was allowed to do in 2012. Um, I believe it was SB 122 by price that we're basically mirroring our legislation off of. You brought up a, another issue on a separate note. You brought up another issue of, um, you know, why was why is it hard for um, the board to recruit new NECs? And it is a collective bargaining issue when you're talking about wages and benefits. The board will or DCA will have to um, negotiate uh, with the with the whatever classification. Um, union it is. So if it's uh, SEIU, they'll have to negotiate with SEIU um, in a contract to try and get wages and benefits approved. So that's part of an issue. It's a, it's a collective bargaining issue whenever you talk about wages and benefits. And then in terms of disciplinary actions, in our case, the SPB, many of these cases are adjudicated at the SPB first. So before they go to the Board of Vocational Nursing for a disciplinary action, most of the time for our members, we have the case arise at the State Personnel Board. And it's a job issue. Sometimes it could be a criminal case. Some kind, sometimes it's an administrative case. But in all cases, it's adjudicated there first. And then sometime later, the BVMBT will take action. And there'll be uh, a hearing before the Board of Vocational Nursing. So with that, I hope that clears a few things up. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Good afternoon. The next witness, please. Good afternoon. I have this down to about 90 seconds. Okay, perfect. Maybe two minutes, but I'm going to be real quick with it. Uh, That's all right. Thank you for allowing me to uh, come and uh, offer public comments. Um, my name is Brian Chilstrom. I'm a education consultant, uh, taxpayer. I'm up here on my own dime. Um, 
I've worked in uh, public education institutions, uh, private post-secondary institutions of higher learning, and private for-profit educational institutions for over the past 28 years. I've traveled here today at my own expense and as a taxpayer who has first-hand knowledge of the experiences to communicate to members of the Sunset Review Committee as to the importance to consumer safety in healthcare setting as well as protections for consumer students enrolled in healthcare programs that work, that the work of the BBMPT and also the BRN should continue for many years in the future. If anyone doubts the operational need for these two boards, one would only have to look to the state's Office of the Attorney General and her staff's regulatory action related to Corinthian colleges and the tens of millions of dollars that is being forced to, they are being forced to return to consumer students in addition to the dozens of Corinthian group colleges that are being forced to sail or cease operations in the state. The BBMP staff, through its leadership of its executive officer, Teresa Bella Jones, seeks excellence in the professional vocational nursing technician education programs psychiatric technician programs, assuring quality that includes program evaluation, internal and external reviews, systems of performance measurement, and continuous quality improvement. To be sure, the BVMPT and the BRN has its detractors. Some folks would like to see both boards sunset take effect this evening. These are the same folks who have learned rather than to offer a quality compliant nurse or psychiatric technician education program, and rather than to adhere to regulation, regulatory requirements and policies that ensure protection to the patient and consumer students, they simply like to take shortcuts. And then when challenged, these folks, same folks participate in a campaign to discredit the important regulatory work performed by the professional staffs of the BVMPT or the BRN by contacting the governor's office, their local senator, assembly member, or Department of Consumer Affairs with erroneous complaints of, of incompetence and unfair practices. To speak to this points that I think that you're centered on with the BBMPT is this. In 2011, I sat with your chief educate, your chief legislative consultant for the Senate. I proposed a fee schedule for the BBMPT. Senator Price picked it up and took it to the BRN. The executive officer of this board, Mrs. Bella Jones, and the supervising NEC, Mrs. Cheryl Anderson, predicted the catastrophic issues that you're now facing on this board because of the lack of funding. This is fund-driven problems. I'm in the business community. I'm in the education community. And we could see this happening. If a not enough emphasis is put on approving new schools, as far as doing a good job and just not writing a blanket check to get out from underneath the scrutiny and, and the criticisms that they're under, you're gonna have a lot of problems out at these nursing education institutions. Thank you. In closing. That was a long two minutes. Well, you know, like I say, if you're not checked, that's why we need, but just in closing here is that these problems were predictable and they're not because of the incompetence of a board or an NEC staff. If they had the people to do the job and they had the funding that was requested five years ago, you'd be applauding them and wanting to uh, extend them for six years. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate your comments and thank you for coming today. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Velma Gaines Miller and I'm a licensed vocational nurse and I'm also the executive officer of the Licensed Vocational Nurses League of California Incorporated. And I am here today to support the, um, the Board of Vocational Nurses and Psychiatric Technicians and also the Board of Registered Nurses to continue their job to, um, to protect the consumers of California. I'm finished. <laughs> My God, that was wonderful. I think we agree. Thank you very much. And thank you for... For being here, thanks for the presentation, and the best to you, Ms. Bellow-Jones, on your retirement. Uh, hope you enjoy it and, uh, and get to do a lot of the things that you'd like to do and, and have, a, have a great time and a lot of fun. So, and thank you for your willingness to continue your participation in, in service. And we will be in recess until 15 minutes after adjournment of the joint session downstairs. Thank you.
Yes, we, we did save the best for last. Did. Absolutely. And, uh, and I just had my teeth whitened before they got here, so I feel much better <laughs> about that, so we could, we could shine up here. So well, it's a review of the Dental Board of California. So welcome, and thanks for your patience today. And we have a few issues to go through, and if, uh, Fran, we could... All right, can you begin? Good evening. Oh, <laughs> not a good word. <laughs> Chairs and distinguished members and committee staff, I'm Fran Burton. I'm president of the Dental Board. Uh, joining me today are Dr. Bruce Witter, vice president, Karen Fisher, executive officer, Sarah Wallace, assistant executive officer, and Teresa Lane, Enforcement Chief. I'll begin with a brief overview, if I could, and will be followed by Dr. Witcher, who will uh, outline the board's accomplishments since the last sunset review. The Dental Board was created by the California Legislature in 1885 to regulate dentists. 150 years later, the board remains in existence and regulates the practice of approximately 80,000 licensed dental care professionals in California, including 40,163 dentists, 44,230 registered dental assistants, and 1,545 registered dental assistants in extended functions. In addition, the board is responsible for setting the duties and functions of approximately 50,000 unlicensed dental assistants. Our board is consisted of 15 members, eight practicing dentists, one registered dental hygienist, one registered dental assistant, and five public members. So the five public members uh, comprise about one third of the board. The governor appoints the dentist, the RDH, the RDA, and three public members. In addition, the Assembly appoints a member and the Senate appoints a member. I am an appointment of the Senate Rules Committee. There are currently no vacancies. The mission of the board is to protect and promote the oral health and safety of California consumers by ensuring quality dental health care in the state. In order to fulfill its mission, the board implements regulatory programs and performs a variety of functions, such as setting licensure requirements for dentists and dental assistants, including examination requirements and issuing and renewing licenses, including a variety of permits and certifications. The board also has its own enforcement division with sworn and unsworn staff which is tasked with investigating both criminal and administrative violations of the Dental Practice Act. As part of the disciplinary function of the board, it also monitors dentists and RDAs who may be on prob probation and manages a diversion program for licensees whose practice may be impaired due to abuse of dangerous drugs or alcohol. The Dental Board is a self-supporting special fund that obtains its revenues from licensing and permits of dentists, registered dental assistants, and registered dental assistants in extended functions. We receive no general fund money. The revenues are deposited and maintained in two separate accounts which are not commingled. The dentistry fund has an appropriation of $13 million and the Dental Assisting Fund an appropriation of $2 million. Further information about the Dentistry Fund will come to you later. The board supports a staff of 69 employees who work in various units, such as administration complaints and compliance, 
discipline coordination, investigation and analysis, enforcement, examination, and licenses. We maintain two offices, one in Sacramento and an enforcement office in Orange County. This concludes my remarks. I'd like to introduce Dr. Bruce Witcher, who will give you some information on some internal changes since our last sunset review. Thank you very Thank much, Thank you. Ms. Burton.